What's up, baseball players? I'm Coach Dan Blewett. In today's video, we're going to talk about when you should start learning a curveball. All right, so if you're new here, I'm Coach Dan. Be sure to check out the description below. I'll put my links to my other curveball videos. I have one of the most popular uh, how to throw a curveball videos on YouTube. So I'll link to all that below along with my books, my online pitching courses, and other resources for coaches. So this is a hotly contested question about when to throw a curveball and understand that there's multiple factors involved. It's not just skeletal immaturity and health, which is what doctors will, that's the, their perspective when they give recommendations. Typically, there's also the developmental aspect and being recruitable in high school. So let's talk about some of that. So number one, I'll just give you the answer right now. I believe, and this is my opinion, and this is the way I did as a coach, that you should teach a curveball to a kid in his 14U summer, so the year before they're going into high school. And the reason being is that your our goal is to have a really good curveball when recruiting time runs around at 16U or 17U. Now, teaching a curveball is not super difficult. Again, my video below, if you need to learn, it's really thorough, it's easy. It's not hard to grab the grip and start to understand the physics of it and what you're trying to accomplish and the spin you're trying to put on the ball. That stuff's not that hard. What is hard is to have a really excellent curveball, not only that has extremely tight spin and thus has really great break, but you, that you also feel comfortable throwing it as hard as you possibly can, which is necessary to get better break and more deception. And also that you can locate not only for a called strike, but then balance it when you need to or throw it on sort of like the one two location, which is at the kind of like the black of the strike zone at the bottom of the strike zone. It's really hard to do that, to have a really sharp, dynamic curveball that you can actually throw for strikes. So then hitters can't just like ignore it. It's a long process. And there's more evidence for this than now, because if you look at most college and pro pitchers, a majority of them throw sliders, despite the fact that almost all, all pitchers learn a curveball as their first pitch. So what does this tell you? This tells you that most players, when they get to college, their coach says, mm -mm, that curveball is not good enough to play here. Um, we got to teach you another breaking ball. So they teach them a slider. That's typically what happens. So more than half of kids who go on to play college baseball end up learning a slider because their curveball just wasn't that good. It, that just should show you how hard it is to have a really excellent curveball. So now if we're taking that premise as fact, whether you believe that or not, it's okay. I believe it's fact that most players are not going to develop an amazing curveball over time. They're going to have to switch to a slider. If it's that hard, then we need to give it a couple years. In my experience as a coach, it takes typically two good years for a kid to have a pretty reasonably decent, that's a lot of words, a lot of verbs, a pretty decent curveball that he can throw for strikes, feels confident in, and has decent break. Two years. So if you start to extrapolate this out, if I teach him that in his 14U summer, by time he hits his 16U summer, which is right at the cusp of that 17U really critical season for recruiting, then his curveball is going to be pretty good. And that's what we really need to focus on. Now, I wouldn't give that recommendation if that was going to you know, be a direct conflict and really cause a lot of injuries. If you look at research with curveballs, it's clear from research through ASMI, you know, this very reputable you know, American Sports Medicine Institute, some of the best biomechanics analysts in the world have done this research. They found that the most stressful pitch is the fastball because velocity is heavily tied to how much stress you put on your arm. Now, you do throw the curveball at the same arm speed as a fastball. You throw them exactly as hard. You throw them both as hard as you can. But the curveball comes out slower and the release is slightly different. So, but they found that the curveball puts less stress through the arm than the fastball does. So when you start to talk about why uh, does, is the curveball so demonized and why are we so afraid of teaching it, um, it's not exactly clear from stress. But what the ASMI has also found through their research is that kids who throw more curveballs report more pain than kids who don't or throw less curveballs. So yes, the curveball is a less stressful pitch, but kids who throw more of them report more arm pain. So again, the verdict is a little bit out. So here's my recommendation. I, I just, it's really sad when I see coaches call the game for kids and they're calling like 50% curveballs. It's too much. It doesn't teach kids to pitch well. It doesn't teach them to rely on location and change of speed. It just teaches them, hey, I've got a curveball and young players don't hit curveballs well. So I'm just going to push this button like a video game and get a swing and miss whenever I need it. And then when they hit high school ball, they're not very good pitchers. They just have a curveball. And now if their curveball isn't even that good for the high school level, 
they don't really have much at all. So when I teach a Kerbal, I'm very explicit at, at telling kids, this is a tool that you are not to use all the time. Because our goal, if you're looking at a pitch mix for a three pitch player, it's on average 70% fastballs, 15% of uh, off speed pitch one, which is you're going to be your change up, and then 15% of off speed pitch two, which is either a curveball or a slider. Because a curveball is not the right pitch for everybody. I'll try to figure out if a kid's better for a slider or better with a curveball. A lot of that's depending on their arm slot. So lower arm slots should really go to sliders. Higher arm slots, normal arm slots should go to curveballs or sliders. It's up to them. Um, but you want to fit the breaking ball to the player. And some kids just really spin a curveball well and don't spin a slider as well. Some kids really spin a slider well and they don't get the curveball as well. So again, it's just it's a it's a process. So understand what I'm saying, how to throw when to throw a curveball. It's really when to teach a breaking ball. And that's again, I think the 14U summer. But again, I tell kids, look, you're learning this at 14U. I'm not giving you this gift, this new piece of knowledge, this new pitch to go abuse it and throw it half the time. I'm telling you, now that you've learned it, practice it. Every time you play catch with your buddies, throw some curveballs. You know, throw 10, 15 curveballs every time you're playing catch. You're going to throw them half speed, 50% while you're playing catch. And those hundreds and then thousands of reps just playing catch with it all the time, that's where that curveball is really going to get good. So they need to start practicing it consistently. But when they get into games during their 14U and 15U summer and spring, they're going to only throw that curveball 10 to maybe 20% of the time tops. And so if you throw 80 pitches in a game, that's eight curveballs up to 16 curveballs. And if anyone's saying throwing 15, 16 curveballs is going to blow your arm out, then no one would have an arm, really. I mean, if you think about it, no one would have an arm left if that, if that quantity of curveballs would blow your arm out. So obviously injury, injuries are happening because of your own individual factors. Like I had Tommy John twice. I didn't have like terrible mechanics and I also wasn't overused as a kid. My elbow ligament just like didn't like the way my body threw that much. Even as I evolved and threw harder and got and improved my mechanics, I still just always had elbow problems. So rem remember that injuries are, are highly subjective to one pitcher. You can have someone like Max Scherzer who throws 2000 innings and never needs elbow surgery and someone else who's had two of them by the time they're 25. It's highly variable. But anyway, the big thing is if your kid's not relying on his curveball way too much and he's throwing 10 to 20 percent, it's going to be totally fine and completely compatible with the overall relative amount of risk of throwing a baseball because throwing a baseball is just inherently risky for your arm. It's when you're throwing 50 percent curveballs, you're throwing 40 curveballs a game that you really start to see problems. And that's, again, what the ASMI research seems to suggest that players that throw more curveballs report more pain. So understand that I'm telling kids, hey, we're going to teach you this at 14U, mostly so you can practice it, mostly so you can throw it in bullpens, mostly so you can play catch with it a lot and really learn it and get the feel, and then throw it 10 to 20% of the time in the game and continue to rely on command and your changeup as well. Because those are the things that are, you're always going to need no matter what level in baseball you get to. So, and the last thing I want to cover here when you're trying to determine whether you're going to throw a curveball or a slider for the rest of your life, you need to give it time. So don't just spin curveballs for a month and be like, ah, I can't do this. I'm going to go to a slider. Also, don't throw a curveball for the, you know, the entire first uh, half of the year. And then when you show up at high school tryouts, you bounce a couple and your coach goes, oh, let me teach you a slider. And then you scrap the curveball for the slider. You have to give yourself a chance to throw it in games. It's hard to throw them in games. You have to throw them when the pressure's on. You have to take that whole learning process. You can't just throw them in practice, throw them in all winter, and then you get in the game and you bounce a couple and you get nervous and you're like, uh, I don't want to throw this curveball anymore. I'm just going to throw a slider because it's easier, easier to throw for a called strike, but it's not as good of a pitch. You can't let people pressure you. If you, believe, if you learn the curveball or you learn the slider and you, and you really believe in it and you feel like I've got something here, this is the pitch that I want to stick with, you have to stick with it through thick and thin, and you have to go through those growing pains of, of hanging them and bouncing them and not being able to find them in the game. That's a crucial part of the learning process, and a lot of kids chicken out when they get to that place, or coaches wrongly say, oh, you've really struggled with that curveball uh, first week of practice. Let's teach you something different. It's a long-term process, two years or three years to get that curveball really good. And again, good isn't just the spin. It isn't just the grip. It's commanding it. It's throwing it for strikes. It's throwing it, again, bouncing it when you need to bounce it, throwing it for a called strike when it needs to call, be a called strike. So understand, it's hard. It's really hard to, A, throw hard enough to play in college, 
it's really hard to develop to develop a college or pro quality curveball and a college or pro quality changeup and college or pro quality command and stay healthy. It's hard to be a pitcher. So the biggest thing is you've got to learn the curveball with enough time to really nurture it and practice it so that it's ready for you when the recruiting stuff really picks up at 16 or 17U. Again, and if you're not throwing too many of them, then that should be completely safe and compatible with the, the general level of risk that pitching just provides you know, as a baseline. All right. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.